Hello and welcome to Jumbo Line Printing and Jumbo Line Model Railway. Today we're going to have a look at how we can make windows for your models. There are lots of ways you can do this, no way is particularly right. And uh, we're all going to do two ways today and uh, see what they look like. I start the process by using my art package Draw Plus and what I do is I create uh, rectangles of certain sizes. I'm using the scale of 4mm per foot and basing this on, a, on an 8 foot wide window, 4 foot deep. So that's 32mm uh, wide and 16mm deep. For the, for the purposes of drawing it, be these. Um, I'm doing it in uh, a larger scale to begin with, but it's at the same proportions. Um, and I should be doing two versions. One, which will just is a simple uh, drawing, and then one, which is what I call print and cut, used with a Cricut machine, where it prints the uh, object and then cuts it out. And I'll go into the, showing you that later in the video. Um, as you can see at the moment I'm just uh, maneuvering all the bits and pieces where I want them and then I'll export that as a picture. Um, the next next one will be what I, I've called weathered. It's a very simple method of, of the print and cut where it's just added a bit of texture to the drawing itself. Nothing in particular, nothing fancy, just a simple shading of, of the, uh, the window frames themselves. Um, by all means, this is not an extensive uh, design. It's a very simple design. It's showing you the concept of using the two methods that I'm going to show you today. As you can see, I've added a bit of a, a shading effect to the, uh, the frame and then put in the, the glass bits in, in the frame just to, to make it look. And what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that one drawing again. I fire up my Cricut software and start a new project. I have to upload the image that I want to use and in this case it's going to be the plain white window frame. I cut out the, um, the white parts that need to be cut out on the paper itself using this method and then I save it as a cut only. Once that's there, I can select the object that I want to insert into the document. It comes in. What you notice here is that I mistakenly, although I put it into metric, I mistakenly do it by 32 centimetres by 16 centimetres, as opposed to millimetres. Simply enough to change once it's all done. 
just just change the sizes regarding what they need to be. And notice here that I'm changing them to white. Technically, it has, this has no effect on on how it works. It just basically, if you've got lots of uh, objects on a on a design and you want some different colour vinyls, for instance, then it would set them onto different coloured mats uh, regarding your colour. So if you've got red, green, and blue designs, you'd have them on different coloured mats just to keep it so it's simple. Using this uh, white colour for the designs just makes it simple for me to show you what they are. Okay, so we're going to prepare our mat. And to do that, we're going to use a vinyl that will be cut using the cricket machine. You only need a couple of centimetres of vinyl. So I'll cut that for now. And this is the mat that we're using to make off the protective sheet. It stops the dust getting to the sheet. And this is the, the vinyl we're using. You just vinyl side up, paper backing sticks to the, the cutting mat, and that's all we need. So we've got our uh, material ready. Um, the vinyl is on the mat, ready to ready to cut. So make sure everything's ready and then we just press continue and then it comes up with the materials we need to use. Um, in the favourites there's only a couple there so I'll click on all different materials and I select the vinyl. That loads it. It's ready. So this is the tedious part, picking out all these little bits. 
This part is called reading. And the smaller the design, the more time consuming it is. Now this is just a, a simple design for a window. The designs can be as intricate as you want them to be really. And just being simple is, is key. Let's get everywhere. So there we have four sets of windows for now. Right, the next job we need to do is to transfer it and for that we use transfer paper. Basically it's just a thin, clear, sticky paper. And that sticks to the vinyl and that will lift the vinyl off the, uh, the cut the paper back in. So at this point we've finished with our original mat, our sticky mat. So let's put this back. Stop the dust getting to it. As a model railway person, I've come across lots of these, and these are the packing pieces for Pico points. And what they do is they give a pretty damn decent way of making scratch built windows. 
be tough. They are a bit thick. So I need approximately that much. And you cut them over size. You can't see that. That's too small actually. <laughs> Never mind. Just do half in there. Just demonstrate what it is we're actually doing. So we've got our window material. And what we do, we peel this off. Like so. so, it takes it off the backing, and then we have our windows. Start at one end, work our way across. Our little scraping tool. And make sure it's there. There it is. Then we take off the transfer paper. I'm just making sure I'm in shot here. Yeah, I am. And the vinyl, the cut vinyl, is now stuck to the thick plastic casing that held the pico points. Which we're going to use for our windows themselves. And there we have two windows. And you can fit them either way. And you can cut them so they just fit over the hole in the building. Like so. And that is scaled in OO to an 8 foot wide by a 4 foot deep window. So we come back to the second style of window that we're making, which is a weathered one. And I'll cut it out after loading it in and save it as a print and cut rather than just a normal cut. And it's sized and, and I'll play around a bit until I get it how I want it on the screen uh, and on the, on the mat. And then all of a sudden it's, it's uh, ready to uh, print out. And then I have to uh, select a printer to, to print which piece of paper I want to print. As you can see, it's looks the printer and it's going to print that image. So back to our sheet, uh, Matt, cutting Matt. And this is what's printed out. Now what I'll do is I'll explain the different parts of the uh, image. The dark black border is a registration mark which the cutter will look at to see exactly where this uh, image is sat on the paper so it knows where to cut. You'll notice that this is a bolder looking picture um, than what it did do on the screen and the reason for that is that we, we had an effect called bleed. If you can imagine you've got uh, your blade cutting out certain parts 
you don't want the blade to cross an area where it hasn't been printed so you add, you add bleed and what will that do is enables your blade to make sure it's always cutting through part of a, um, an image that has been printed rather than right on the very edge and you can see the, the colour then the white paper underneath and the colour then the white paper so that you add the bleed and it just makes sure the cut is right up against the, uh, the printed part of the paper so the next step is to go into the machine so back with the machine I'll throw it in, tell it to load and the first thing you'll see it will scan the paper and the light will come on for it to test the position So the next step is for us to uh, get rid of the paper we don't need on, on here. And normally what you do is that you bend the mat rather than bend the paper. But the paper that I'm pulling off now is, is not needed at all. back to reading them. Two ways of doing this and I'm going to do hoping to lift just the window. There we are. This is where I'm supposed to be uh, showing you how I've laminated the windows in the uh, small A5 pouch. But uh, 
as it happens, I'd press the uh, button on the uh, on the camera to start filming, and actually I pressed it to stop filming. Um, and I wanted to stop it. I actually started filming, so on and so forth. So what I've got is a lot of footage in between the footage I really wanted. So uh, that's my mistake. But, um, you can just about see there on the cutting mat the pouch which is going to be laminated. This is where I'm cutting out the card base uh, for the mock house wall. Um, you can see I've got no intentions of filming this actual part. It's still in the mistake mode of pressing the uh, button on the camera to, to film when I didn't want to film and stop when I wanted to film. But once you've done that and you're not checking on what you're doing and keeping an eye on things, uh, the mistake just keeps on going and going and going. So I'm actually making it there and we'll just watch it for a, a while and see if I get to the part where I'm uh, actually sticking the uh, brick surface onto it. Um, it's it's actual uh, print that I've done myself onto a printable vinyl on my large format printer and it uh, it's just a, a brick texture that I've, I've used. It was for my retaining wall. Well, the answer to that is no. You do see the uh, piece of big uh, texture that I've cut out ready to stick on. You can actually see me sticking it on. You don't actually see me sticking the windows on neither. You can see the finished effect at the end of it. So we'll just have to uh, go to that. But just quickly I'll explain. The, the pieces of window that are stuck to the vine, uh, to the acetate, uh, which are the uh, covers for the Pico point motors, uh, points rather, and the the laminated pieces they are just glued with rocket card glue to the back of the uh, the, um, the wall well there we have the finished object with the windows you have the weathered ones or the, the patterned ones at the bottom and the vinyl cut ones at the top. Just to show you the back, I didn't manage to do this very well because I messed up with the, with the video machine. As you can see on the, uh, the top two are the vinyl ones. They're just glued directly to the uh, card just the same as the bottom ones are and just the same as I would do in say a Metcalf kit uh, and what you can do now if I wanted to I could just cut cut away this final hair over the doorway and fit a door just the same as I do with the, with the Metcalf kits. It's a fairly simple exercise and what I probably would do if I was uh, building this myself, I'd cut some more card and fit it in just like a windowsill. And I could have like a heading stones at the top. Not all walls do have heading stones at the top of where the lintel is. But uh, as you can see, it's got a fairly reasonable um, effect.
Well, I'm sorry I messed up the uh, recording towards the end, but uh, I think I got the point across, and I hope you found it uh, helpful. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.